...to where the history of modern insurance has its origins. Where else but in Bonnie, Canny, Scotland. Certainly, it's two Church of Scotland ministers who deserve the credit for inventing the first true insurance fund back in 1744. Robert Wallace and his friend Alexander Webster. Wallace and Webster were unhappy at the way the widows and children of their fellow clergymen were treated when the Grim Reaper struck. They often found themselves homeless and penniless. The plan Wallace and Webster came up with was ingenious. The first true insurance fund in history. These are some of the voluminous calculations that Robert Wallace did, now housed at the National Archives of Scotland. And you can see how he ran the numbers over and over again, making very careful assumptions about the maximum number of widows and orphans that would have to be provided for. The key point, however, was that from now on, ministers wouldn't just pay money in that would be paid out when one of their number died. Rather, they would pay premiums that would be used to create a fund, and the fund would then be invested for profitable purposes. The widows and orphans henceforth would be paid out of the returns on that money, leaving the premiums to accumulate. All that was required for the scheme to work was an accurate projection of how many widows and orphans there would likely be in the future. A calculation which Wallace and Webster made with extraordinary precision. As Robert Wallace understood 250 years ago, size matters in insurance, because the more people are paying into a fund, the easier it becomes, by the law of averages, to predict how much will have to be paid out each year. Although no individual's date of death can be known in advance, actuaries can calculate the likely life expectancy of a large group of individuals with quite astonishing precision. The creation of the Scottish Minister's Widows Fund was a milestone in financial history, for it provided a model not just for Scottish clergymen, but for everyone who aspired to provide for life's eventualities. By 1815, the principle of insurance was sufficiently widespread to be adopted for the widows of men who lost their lives fighting against Napoleon. At the Battle of Waterloo, your chances of getting killed were up to one in four, but at least if you'd taken out insurance, you had the consolation of knowing that your wife and children wouldn't be thrown out onto the street. It gives a whole new meaning to the phrase, take cover. By the mid-19th century, being insured was as much a badge of respectability as going to church on Sunday. What no one anticipated back in 1744 was that the careful calculations of two Scottish ministers would grow into today's huge insurance industry.